right, good morning. I'm gonna do a nasal tracheal suction in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is check the patient's chart, and then I'm gonna see if there's anything important information that I will need. And then I will gather all my appropriate um, necess necessities like um, the catheter tray kit, like the suctioning tray kit. And then I also need to make sure I bring along the appropriate PPE, like a gown, face shield, everything that I'll need for um, to do the suctioning. So I'd always knock on the door, introduce myself, then I would check the patient's ID band, wash my hands, and I'd always um, assess the patient before I do a suctioning, like listening to the lung sounds, and then um, checking the vital signs. So I will get the patient ready. So I'm gonna apply all the appropriate PPE, and then I'm gonna apply a gloving on, make sure I have appropriate gloving on. everything's clean I wash my hands again and then I will get to everything ready so always you want to oxygenate the patient so I'm gonna go ahead and get their um, oxygen mask ready here all right so I'm gonna connect it to here And as always with these masks, you want to make sure the bag inflates before you place it onto the patient. So always when you go to section a patient, you want to hyperinflate their lungs so we can easily get out the secretions out of their lungs without any complications. And then I will get my suctioning tube ready. Tubing ready, I would always connect it to my suctioning back in you here and then I would turn it on to regulate and then I would occlude the opening here and then I want it to be between one negative 120 to negative 150 and if it's too much then I can always turn the dial down that way I know it's on the appropriate setting for the patient and then with um, nasal tracheal suctioning you can um, place in a nasal trumpet for the patient if you have them available at the facility and so what you would do is you would measure from the ear to the um, nasal opening here the nostril there and so when we find the right size and you can also tell by looking at the bubble so you can look at the bubble compared to their nose if it has the same as if it's too big or too small or and then that way you can place it into their nose very nicely and not be able to cause any trauma to their nose. So when we're ready, we always um, can lubricate around the end of piece of it so that way it goes in smoothly into the patient. Then you can remove the oxygen source and you can place it very carefully into the patient, always having the bubble facing towards the nasals down there. And then place on back on the oxygen, make sure that it's keeping the lungs hyperinflated. And then I will get my kit ready. So I'll place my lubricating jelly on the lid or on clean gauze. I will get my sterile gloves ready. Open that up, place sterile water into the basin of the catheter tray here. That way, um, it'll re-sterilize the catheter and it's nice and clean for the patient. And then when we're ready, then we'll apply our sterile gloves on to do the treatment. So for the sterile gloves, um, if you can, um, try to place them over the gloving. If you can't, then you can remove them, wash your hands, and apply them. So you're always going to want to keep the dominant hand, your sterile hand, So when you're ready, then we will get everything prepared. So I go ahead and grab my suctioning tube in here and always make sure there's no kinks, no twists in it or anything. And I would also apply if the doctor needs 
um, beforehand if the doctor needs a sample I can always place on a little suctioning catch it like there's a little thing that you can catch in another cup here for the lab so I'm gonna go ahead since I don't need I'm gonna take my sterile hand with my right hand and I'm gonna place the catheter into the suctioning tubing and as soon as you know you have it connected you start hearing a hissing sound and when you're ready you need to test it to make sure it's working properly so you can suction up some sterile water and that will also help um, get some sterile water into the tubing and it'll make the, the secretions come out easier too and so then we will lubricate the end piece being very careful not to touch anything else but placing it in the lubricant and then when we are ready we will remove our oxygen source and then we'll be prepared and then we'll go slowly into the patient's nose and if you feel an obstruction right away then you can have the patient cough and then slowly go down in there until you're at the appropriate area and then you'll begin to suction And you don't want to suction more than 15 seconds. And when you're done, you will slowly move your hand up to the end of the catheter. That way you don't splash anything out when you suction. And so when you're done, you always want to place the oxygen back onto the patient, especially after you suction. You want to reinflate their lungs. So if we want to do it again, we always need to only do it at the most three times you don't want to do more than that because it can cause complications for the patient and so when we are finished we'll wrap it you can wrap it around your glove place your hand on the suction catheter then you can remove it with your gloving like that dispose of it and you can place your tubing over here if you need to use it again and then you will remove your PPE and then you will always wash your hands after you remove any gloving, place another gloving on. Then I would reassess the patient to make sure their lungs sound, sound okay, see if the suctioning is helping, and then helping the patient. And then I'll check the vital signs to make sure that especially their oxygen level is okay. And if they are finished with their, finished with the oxygen, I would shut it off. And then I always shut off the suctioning and I would remove the mask and set it in the appropriate area. Just sit there for now, all right. And so then I would remove everything, clean off the tables, anything that I have touched, anything that may have got anything on it, always clean it off. I would always go and then a chart on the patient's chart and then I would let anybody of the staff know that I did a nasal tracheal suctioning.